Hi everyone, welcome to Things Lucy Reads. I'm Luce. Um, this is a bookshelf tour. I'm going to show you all of the Tolkien and Tolkien related books that I own. So I have two Tolkien shelves. I have the main one that you can probably see in the frame of my other videos and then I have this other one down here for the books that are too tall to fit on the other shelf and then I have a few that don't fit on either shelf as yet because I always need to do some reorganizing. Anyway, so I'm going to show you the ones that aren't on any shelves at the moment, and the first one is the Folio Society Silmarillion, which I showed a little bit in my book haul. Um, yeah, it it would fit on the other shelf if I didn't have the slipcase on, but I don't want to take the slipcase off, so I just have to deal with it. And then the next one is the Lord of the Rings sketchbook by Alan Lee, which I also showed you in the haul. Um, and then the hardcover edition of The Hobbit, which I also showed in the haul, and then this one I also showed in the haul as well, uh, Tolkien's World by Gareth Hanrahan and Peter McKinstry. So I will link that um, in the corner if you would like to go and check that out when you finished watching this. The first book on this shelf that I'm going to show you is The Hobbit An Unexpected Journey Chronicles Creatures and Characters, which has a foreword by Andy Serkis. Um, that's just about, obviously, all of the people and uh, characters that are in the film. The next one on here is The Hobbit Desolation of Smile Chronicles, Cloaks and Daggers. So this is about um, costumes and also weapons and other accessories, and it's really awesome. And then the next one is Doctor Who of Tolkien, which I showed in my haul. I also have um, the Tolkien's World colouring book, which was the first Tolkien colouring book to come out that I'm aware of but I haven't coloured anything in, in that yet. I also have the Lord of the Rings movie trilogy colouring book, which was put out by Warner Brothers. I have the Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring uh, visual companion. Uh, this at one point did have a dust cover, but I bought it in a lifeline, so by the time I got to it, it was long gone. I also have the um, Lord of the Rings complete visual companion, which is um, very, very... Uh, knocked around because when I was 13 I used to carry it with me Hermione style um, everywhere yeah it was a whole thing um, and then I have the official movie guide for The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey um, I also have for An Unexpected Journey the visual companion by Jude Fisher and then uh, continuing this theme I have the Desolation of Smaug official movie guide and also the Desolation of Smaug Visual Companion by Jude Fisher. Um, these visual companions are really cool, by the way. Uh, they um, definitely disprove the theory that Legolas and Tauriel were ever going to be a couple, if we are counting them as canon, that is, which personally I am. I have the Hobbit Battle of Five Armies Visual Companion by Jude Fisher, and also the Hobbit Battle of Five Armies Official Movie Guide. And all of the official movie guides are by Brian Sibley. And then I have The Art of the Lord of the Rings by Gary Russell, which um, my parents bought me for Christmas one year and I have yet to read, but it is one of my most prized possessions. Um, I think it was about $70, which was a big deal for my parents to spend on me at the time. And then I have The World of Tolkien, Mythological Sources of the Lord of the Rings by David Day. This was a really awesome thing that I found on Bookmooch. Um, which is a site for book swapping and a lot of people overseas won't send to Australia but this book was in Argentina and the person that had it was willing to send it to me and it arrived in absolutely perfect condition so I'm really happy about it and hopefully this year I will actually read it. Okay and then the next one on this shelf is The Art of the Lord of the Rings by Tolkien as well as Wayne G. Hammond and Christina Skull. I also showed this in my recent haul. Uh, the next one um, that I'm going to show you from this shelf is The Making of Middle Earth, A New Look Inside the World of J.R.R. Tolkien by Christopher Snyder, which is just like a book about um, some of Tolkien's inspirations and things, and I've flipped through it and it's really pretty. And then the next two books that I'm going to show you from the shelf are Sign Language and um, For Wellington by Vigo Mortensen. Vigo, who plays Aragorn, is also an artist, a photographer, and a, a poet as well and um, he does a lot of different things and so these are two of his art books 
I got these ones specifically because they contain photos that he took around the time that he was in New Zealand filming The Lord of the Rings. And I just think they're really cool. And um, his artwork is really interesting and um, nice to look at. So definitely recommend those. Okay, so um, that's all that I'm going to show you on this shelf. I now need to rearrange my tripod and um, get up to the other one. So bear with me a minute. Okay, so to start with I'll show you just the little things that I have decorating my shelf. First one is the Lego set called something like White Council Battle or Witch King Battle. I got it because it comes with these Elrond and Galadriel minifigures and Elrond is my favourite. I then have the SDCC exclusive um, Strider and Arwen 2-pack Funko Pops which my best friend Nathan bought for me for my birthday last year. Um, and then I have the Hobbit Tauriel Funko Pop, which was one of the first ones ever made. Next up I have a Lord of the Rings fanzine made by a friend of a friend who lives in Melbourne. It's called I Am No Man. And it's just about kind of um, a bunch of stories about people discovering Lord of the Rings for the first time and what it's like to be that one Lord of the Rings girl at your school, which that was me. So yeah, so it was really nice. I don't think it's up on Etsy, unfortunately. Um, but if you are interested in buying a copy, I will um, uh, let you know the Twitter handle of the girl that makes them. The next thing I have is a Mark the Page bookmark with the Even Star on it, which was part of a Christmas present from um, my best friend Chiara. The next thing is a One Ring necklace, which was a Christmas present from a few years ago from my friend Hayley. Okay, and then also up here on the subject of necklaces, I have um, an unofficial replica of Tauriel's necklace from The Hobbit, um, which I got from eBay. I also have, uh, I think this one is an official replica, but I don't have like a certificate of authenticity or anything, of the of um, Elrond's brooch from The Hobbit, but on a necklace. And then the last one that I have is also unofficial, but it is a replica of the even star because you know I, I mean I mean are you really a Lord of the Rings fan if you don't have a replica of the even star let's be real start from this end the first book I have up here is a book of Middle Earth postcards this is just um, different um, like pieces of official art of uh, different things this one is the two trees of Valinor by Roger Garland. That one is my favourite. Yeah, I've only used one of them so far and the rest I think I'm just going to hang up as decorations in my room. But yeah, that's that one. So the first book on this shelf is The Father Christmas Letters by J.R. Tolkien. I know that the light is shit. I'm in a corner. There's not much I can do about it. The next book I have is So You Think You Know The Lord of the Rings, which is an unofficial quiz book that I picked up for $2 when I was like 12. Um, the next one is the Saga of the Volsungs, which I talked about in my recent haul. I also have the Seamus Heaney translation of Beowulf. Um, I have West of the Mountains, East of the Sea, which is a map of Beleriand and some information about the places on that map. The Road Goes Ever On and On, which is a map of Tolkien's Middle Earth um, as it was in the time of the Lord of the Rings. And then I also have There and Back Again, which is a map of The Hobbit. Um, I have The Lord of the Rings Reader's Companion by Wayne G. Hammond and Christina Skull. I also have Battles of Tolkien and An Atlas of Tolkien, both by David Day. And then I have The History of Middle-Earth Omnibus Part 1 by Christopher Tolkien, which has both parts of The Book of Lost Tales, The Lays of Valerian, The Shaping of Middle-Earth, and The Lost Road and other writings. And then I also have paperback copies of both of the Books of Lost Tales, so that's part two and part one there. I have my regular old black paperback copy of The Silmarillion as well. And then moving on, my paperback copy of The Hobbit, illustrated by Alan Lee. Fellowship of the Ring, illustrated by Alan Lee. The Two Towers, illustrated by Alan Lee. And, whoops. The Return of the King, also illustrated by Alan Lee. Alright, so next I have some magnetic bookmarks. This is from An Unexpected Journey and it's of Elrond. I actually have two of these because the first one that I bought arrived and it had a big crease along here. So that's the one I use and this one is for display. And then I have a Tauriel bookmark that was put out for Desolation of Smaug. 
and the other tower or bookmark which was put out for the Battle of Five Armies. And then I have Lego Arwen and Lego Tauriel engaged in a little bit of a love fest because I ship it a lot, I'm not going to lie. Anyway, so they live there. Um, Tauriel is from the Escape from Mirkwood Lego pack and Arwen is from this Council of Elrond Lego set. Um, also on this one I have Legolas from the um, Escape from Mirkwood Lego pack. I have um, Frodo, which came with this one I think, um, Gimli, which also came with this one, who also came with this one I should say, and um, Gandalf, who didn't, but he's there anyway. And then I also have this little um, Polly McClay version of Elrond. Uh, back when I was on DeviantArt, I was part of a um, group of fans on there called the Nordzola and Icon family, and um, the person that created it made us all of these little clay figurines of the character that we were in that family, so that's really cute. Um, and then some postcards, which also came with that little figure. Um, and then I have a blind bag statue of um, Bofa who now lives as a statue in Rivendell and Elrond is holding an Isle of Man flag because my best friend who lives in the Isle of Man sent me one and I didn't have anywhere else for it. So that is the Council of Elrond Lego and I hope you can't see how horrendously dusty it is. Okay, so I'll just move that over. Alright, and then the next book on this shelf is Tales from the Perilous Realm, illustrated by Alan Lee, and then I have Unfinished Tales, which was not illustrated by Alan Lee. And I actually had to get that one, like, specially printed from the Tolkien website, but now you can buy them in shops, and I'm a little bit salty about it, to be honest. Anyway, and then I have The Languages of Tolkien's Middle Earth by Ruth S. Knoll, aka The Red Elvish Book. I have An Introduction to Elvish by Jim Allen, aka The Green Elvish Book. And then I have A Gateway to Sindarin by David Sarlow, aka The White Elvish Book. Then I have A Guide to Tolkien by David Day. The Complete Tolkien Companion by J.E.A. Tyler. Honestly, if you're thinking about getting this one, I would advise against it. There are some things which he writes in there as if they're absolute fact, but they are actually not supported in the canon. Like the fact that uh, Elodin and Elro here both chose mortality. I would like to see some sources cited for that, please, because I don't think they did, actually. Okay, and then I have The Magical Worlds of the Lord of the Rings by David Colbert. And then I'm, I'm just going to take this out, otherwise I'll never get these others out. I have The Children of Hurin by um, Tolkien, obviously, illustrated by Alan Lee. Aaron and Luthien, illustrated by Alan Lee. The Legend of Sigurd and Gudrun, not illustrated by Alan Lee, unfortunately. The Fall of Arthur, Tolkien's translation of Beowulf. Excuse me, moving my uh, moth repellent over. Um, Tolkien's the Story of Colovo, edited by Valen Fliga, and also, last one, The Lay of Aotru and Itrun, or however you pronounce those, also edited by Valen Fliga. And I actually have a couple of more things to show that I nearly forgot about. I have the entire BBC radio performance of The Lord of the Rings on cassette tape. And in case you're wondering, like a true 90s kid, I do still have a fully functional and working Walkman in which to listen to it. And here are some books I nearly forgot about because I don't keep them on this shelf. To start with, I have this um, vintage box set of The Lord of the Rings. I found this for $10 in my um, local secondhand bookshop and I bought them for my dad because he'd just ruined my copy of The Hobbit and I thought, well, if I buy him just a cheap set of his own, he won't have to read my copies of Lord of the Rings. But then I noticed that the cover art was done by Tolkien himself and I decided that I would keep these editions and if he wants to read The Lord of the Rings he can just go out and find his own. So and then this is The Return of the King and that's the back. And the next book that I'm going to show you is Tolkien and the Silmarillion by Clyde Kilby um, which is like a biography of Tolkien but also like um, a bit of a guide on a few of his works or something like that. Predominantly a biography though, I think. 
The next book I'm going to show you is one that I stole from my dad. It's the Tolkien Biography by Humphrey Carpenter. My dad was going to give this away and I was like, oh, don't you dare. I want to read it. And it's like the definitive biography of him or whatever. And then the next one I have is Master of Middle Earth, The Achievement of J.R.R. Tolkien by Paul Kosher. I honestly don't know why I have so many Tolkien biographies, but I do. It's a thing. And then the next one um, in the same theme is J.R.R. Tolkien, Architect of Middle-Earth, a biography by Daniel Grotter. This one has a really nice cover art. It just looks nice. And then the next one is sort of Tolkien related. It's uh, Peter Jackson, A Filmmaker's Journey by Brian Sibley. Um, I've had this for at least 10 years now and I have not read it. Um, it's not 10 years, it's like 7 or 8, but still I, I don't actually know if I'm going to keep this one and read it, but we'll include it in the video anyway. And then the last book for this video is also my newest acquisition and possibly the most exciting. It is Flora of Middle Earth, Plants of J.R. Tolkien's Legendarium by Walter S. Judd and Graham A. Judd. So this is about all of the plants, real and fictional, that Tolkien mentions in his um, books. And... I am a bit of a nerd for plants, so I think that's really cool. Okay, so that is the end of my Tolkien shelf tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to leave me a comment of any kind in the um, comment box below. That's all from me today, and hopefully I will actually see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye everyone.